Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Redbird Replay. This is Scott Kirker along with Dave Best tonight uh, covering the second game of the year of Metamore softball. Metamore comes into the into the tonight's contest with a 19-10 record. They're 9-3 in the conference. Morton comes in at 21-6, 8-4 in the middle line eye. Dave, this is a, a pretty big game for Metamore. You know, the seedings have already been announced, so that's not going to change anything. But as far as getting some momentum going into postseason play. This is a big game. Yeah, momentum is what it's all about this time of year. Uh, you know, as far as Lady Redbird softball standards go the last few years, we've gotten used to 28, 32, 33 wins. So they're going to have to win some games, go on a nice little run to get there. But, you know, I mean, they uh, – Coach Linder, he has the girls ready. He's been working with them all year long, and his last couple of games, they seem to be hitting a stride. So, you know, you keep building on that tonight and tonight, tomorrow night with Limestone and into the regionals next week. Uh, you know, this is a big game, too, from the standpoint that it's also senior night. So they'll honor some seniors tonight that have been – uh, they've, you know, you'd be hard pressed to find a group of kids that have come through Metamore and had more wins than this group of seniors. They were a lot of these girls were freshmen when Metamore won a state title in 2010. It's hard to believe it. It was three years ago already that that we had that state title, that nice run. But uh, you know, that tonight they need to draw on that experience that they learned then, and uh, you know, this. It's always a heated game with Morton. They've always had a really good softball program. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's just going to be one of those knockdown, drag down fights. Uh, I believe early in the year it was a 3 1 game. So, you know, we expect a little bit more tonight. We were speaking to a couple parents a little bit ago, and they were saying that they, they thought we scored the three runs in the first inning and that we didn't, they didn't think we got anything after that. So it sounds like we need to hit them early yeah. because uh, once they settle in, they're a pretty good softball team. Well, uh, this is senior night, so we'll, we'll uh, let the PA address or PA announcer kind of take over. And we're going to start tonight with Kat DeVore. Who is being escorted by her mom, Cindy Clark DeVore. Cat has been a driving force in our concession stand for the last couple of years. She will be attending Lipscomb University in Nashville to major in vocal performance. She took an avid part in the MTHS choral and theater department and also being a magical singer. And she also student directed the spring play. Her favorite memory is although she's not technically on the team, the girls have treated her with respect and that has meant a lot to her. Congratulations, Kat DeVore. Now, the softball players, starting with number three, Caitlin Hartnett. Caitlin is escorted by her mom and dad, Joan and Blair Hartnett. She will be attending the University of Missouri to study Spanish and health professions. She's also been accepted to Hughes Research Apprenticeship for an undergrad research with professors. Her honors include High Honors, National Honor Society, and Illinois State Scholar, as well as being a four-year three-sport athlete in softball, volleyball, and basketball. She was a four-year snowballer and served as a senior team director. As she has also been a peer partner with the Life Skills Kids. A couple of her favorite softball memories are winning state and getting to run for Jody her freshman year and freaking out about the baseball boys at the hotel in Freeport with all of the girls. Congratulations, Kat Hartnett. Next is number four, Christy Guzman. Christy is escorted by her mother and father, Teresa and Andy Guzman. She will be attending Bradley University to major in education. She has been involved in basketball, softball, student council, and is a member of the National Honor Society. Her favorite softball memory, all of Jamie's quote unquote dumb comments. Congratulations, Christy. Next is number seven, Tyler Samp. 
Tyler is escorted by her dad and mom, Errol and Janice Sam. She will be attending ICC as a member of the Honors Program, and then the Nursing Program, attending OSF School of Nursing to pursue her Master's and work as a Pediatric Nurse Practitioner. She has been involved in softball for four years, basketball and volleyball for three, student council for four years, she's been a class officer for all four years, National Honor Society for two, and high honor roll for four years. A couple of her favorite memories for softball are winning state her freshman year and work getting hit and falling over stools at practice multiple times. <laughs> Congratulations, Tyler. Next is number nine, Heather Morris. Heather is escorted by her dad, Ken Morris, and her plans are to attend ICC and play softball. Her honors include honor, honor roll all four years, second team all-conference in softball. She's played softball all four years and volleyball for two and was involved in chorus for a year. Her favorite softball memory also includes when Brooke fell over the stool at practice. Congratulations, Heather. Next is number 16, Erica Phillips. She is escorted by her mom and dad, Judy and Don Phillips. She'll be attending ICC to further her softball career. Her honors include high honors all four years, first team all-conference in softball, second team all-state in softball, and all-area team, again, for softball. She's also been involved in campus life, fellowship of Christian athletes, and snowball. And her favorite softball memory was being on the 2010 state championship team with her older sister, Justine. Congratulations, Erica. And last, but certainly not least, number 17, Katherine Curtis. She is escorted by her parents, Patrick and Lisa Curtis. Katherine will be attending Bradley University to major in industrial engineering. Her honors include Journal Star Scholar Athlete, National Honor Society President, 2012 Silver Slugger Award, and All-State Orchestra. And her favorite softball memory, hitting a home run against LaSalle Peru in team sleepover. Congratulations, Katherine Curtis. We'd also like to have a special mention for Mrs. Judy Phillips for taking care of the concessions all four years. We thank her very much for her efforts. It's a big job to do. Another round of applause for our seniors, both from Morton and our Metamore Redbirds. And let's get ready for some lineups. You know, for a lot of these girls, it's the, it's the last time they play organized softball. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we've been through it, Scott. I mean, when you – high school is just – it's a great four years. You know, you don't think it is until you're gone. Yeah. And then you realize how much you really miss it. So hopefully these girls, you know, are mature enough to understand that already and, and you know, just know that their last four years, what they've done on the softball diamond, a lot of them – volleyball and and, and uh, basketball and everything how much uh, the school appreciates them oh yeah I, you know when I was in high school uh, we had senior night for football and basketball but we never had anything for baseball mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, and, and that's a nice thing to have is a senior night for for all the sports I was it's, it's, it was really nice to recognize the seniors from Morton I didn't you know obviously we would never have done that in basketball oh, or baseball no. or football or anything back no. then but uh, you know and then the girls took a rose over to them you know I mean that just shows you uh, the camaraderie that they that the girls have with their fellow conference members so uh, here's a starting line it's first for Morton uh, leading off uh, playing first base Nikki Ikesty batting second the pitcher Nicole Cook uh, batting third, the uh, shortstop, Kelsey Dames, uh, the designated player, I guess it'd be like the DH, uh, Tyler Namini, uh, the shortstop, uh, Chandler Ryan, uh, the second baseman, Casey Brunton, uh, the uh, left fielder, Jocelyn Nimmo, the catcher, Bridget Surwear. Surrier. Surrier? Surrier, yes. Surrier. Uh, the right fielder, Jessica Seegers, 
And the flex player is Hope Dean. And for the Lady Redbirds leading off, playing center field is Kat Hartnett. Second, batting second, left fielder Heather Morris. On the mound is number 16, Erica Phillips. Over at first, number seven, Kyler Samp. The shortstop, number one, Megan Hargis. The designated player, batting six, is Katherine Curtis. Right field, number 12, Delaney Jaden. Third base, number two, Abby Barrow. The catcher is number 10, Kara Hartnett. And the second base fleck player is number six, Mackenzie Marshall. You know, the other thing that's kind of changed a lot, too, since we were both in high school, is they play here at the high school back when I was in high school and, and with you. Played at the grade school. Played at the more grade. Yeah. So uh, you could almost say that all of their games were on the road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, things have definitely changed here at, at MTHS in the last 25, 26 years for me. And uh, we'll say, what, 30-ish, 31 for you, 31? Uh, <laughs> I th and actually, this is 30 years for you, isn't it? It is. 31, yeah. It's just, well, this is 30. Yeah, this 30, is 30, 30, yeah. 30, yeah. yeah. So, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, what's up? <laughs> yeah, it has been a long time. Wow. Yeah, yep. Ah, they have such great facilities out here nowadays, you know. Yeah, they've done a great job, this whole baseball, softball, and tennis complex. The complex, yeah. Uh, they all have lights. The varsity fields all have lights. Tennis, yes. just a couple minutes away from the first pitch. Uh, don't want to put any undue pressure on the girls, but uh, you know this, this also has some ramification for the all sports trophy. Yeah, I believe uh, I think we're 50 points behind Morton right now as it stands. Uh, baseball obviously going to pick up that well, a little more tonight. That, so. That's pretty much been clinched. Uh, either going to be a tie. Right. With the baseball is going to actually put us ahead 50 points. So this is a very, very big game. Uh, you win one out of these next two games. Uh, Metamore wants to win both. Like mm -hmm. we said, get the momentum going into the into the um, postseason, and uh, you know, because Metamore, you know, they've they've got ten losses. They've played a very tough schedule. Been in every ball game. Um, some some of those games that in other years maybe went the other way didn't this year, but you know that prepares you pretty well for the for the uh, regionals and sectionals. Well, those are the type of teams you're going to play in the postseason, obviously. You know, I mean, you know, in the regional, you're going to play your middle line I counterparts. You might play the mid-states four or five teams. Uh, but outside of that, you know, once you step into sectionals, you're going to start playing the schools that they've played, like the Freeport Invitational. Uh, I mean, that's just a, that's a great tournament for them to go up there. Better prepares them for the, the postseason run. First up for Morton. The first baseman, Nikki Eichstein. Beautiful but, night here. I well, mean, they finally, nice. finally have softball weather. They've been battling wind and rain and everything all year, so. First pitch is fouled away. A little late on the swing. Eric is ahead 0-1 now. Good looking pitch. Strike two. Looks like a change up from here. Glad you could see that. <laughs> but I'm right in line with the pitcher. I so. did see. I'm off a little bit. A little high and outside. And that takes the count to 1 and 2. That's a good 0-2 pitch too. Up yeah, away. Change the line of sight. She's probably going to come a little low now. See if she can get her to chase one. And that's what she did. She didn't chase, so two and two's count. Now you come with your best pitch because you don't want to go full. Right. Well, the way that changeup looked that first time, I think that's what she's going to toss up here. That's what it was. Grounder up the middle for a base hit. Obviously, Ixty was thinking the same thing I was. Pitcher Nicole Cook now up to bat. High and inside, ball one.
swing and a drive down into the left field on the line. Bans the runner to second. Two hits now for the Potters. Ladies on first and second with nobody out. Brings up Kelsey Dames. He's the shortstop. That ball was hit pretty hard. Yeah, it was a good rip. Just missing inside. Ball one. Came inside, fouled that one off. You know, I might try to live inside on this, this well, hitter anyway. <laughs> I don't know what these girls hit. I'm, I'm sure they're all batting around 350, 400 as it usually is in softball. So there's a bleeder there to shortstop over the third or the fourth. One out. Choice. Nice play. That play was made by Megan Hargis at short, number one. Brings up the cleanup. Low on the first pitch, 1 0. Oh. Taylor Namini. Your guess is good as mine. That's what it looks like. Runners on first and second. One out here in the top of the first. No score. Foul ball out of play. Oh, and, oh, 1 and 1 is the count. 1 and 1. You don't see that uh, six to five put out too often, but in softball, that, that I guess that is kind of a common play. A lot more than baseball. A little low and outside on that one. Two and one is a count now. One down here in the inning. Top of the first. Lady Bird's looking to get out of a little jam here early. Pitch called strike across the plate. Two and two. Erica can help herself out here. Again to third base. Abby Barrow collects it, steps on the bag for out number two. Still first and second, but now with two outs here. Brings up Chandler Ryan, the shortstop. That is a freshman Chandler Ryan. She's a very good basketball player. Very, very good. Must be a pretty good athlete. She's playing varsity softball too. Yes. Pop up, short right Ooh. field, caught by number 12. That is Delaney Jaden on the catch and the inning is over. No runs, two hits. Two left on. Going to the bottom of the first, and it's 0-0 with Metamore coming up. Bring first up for Metamore, Kat Hartnett, Heather Morris, and Erica Phillips. They've been a pretty, top, pretty good top three for the Redbirds. A lot of experience up there at the top. Kyler Samp also had to clean up. You know, she, she seems to be like she's been playing a long time. So is Catherine Curtis. I think, I think she was here when I was in high school. I think. <laughs> She's going to have a little trouble getting around the bases then. <laughs> hey, wait a second here. <laughs> you were talking about the lights earlier. What a great addition. I mean, oh. If you ask me, there's nothing better than coming up to here to watch baseball or softball at 7 o'clock, baseball especially. Uh, you know, unfortunately, this year we've had some really cool weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But, you know, I just love coming up underneath the lights and watching the guys play. And I, I wish the girls would play a little bit more underneath the lights. But, you know, I mean, that's Coach Linder's choice. And maybe he just, his girls play better in, during the day. I probably leave it up to the Coach Linder. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, I think you get a little bit better crowd, too, when you play a little bit later. Yep. Although, from, we have a sparse crowd tonight. I, I wonder if uh Well, there's some the graduations. Crowds, oh, there's graduation. Okay. And there may be some, a bigger crowd over at the baseball team as they try to 
clinch a share of the conference championship tonight at Limestone. We had a good crowd here Monday night. Yes, that's the biggest crowd I've ever seen at a... I, I would have guessed probably between five and 600, wouldn't you? Oh, uh, yeah, at least. Okay, Hartnett in on the hands, a little... Runs it out, safe, safe, beats it out. It wasn't a bunt, but it turned out to be a bunt. Got about four feet from home plate. Swinging bunt, nice and hustle. And the speedster, lead off, chugs down to first base and beats the throw. Brings up Heather Morris, the left fielder. There's a confrontation. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, Coach uh, Stacy Bisher from Morton asking for a con conference with the umps. Play is going to stand. If it's a tie, Stacy, you know the call goes to the runner. Well, she's probably wondering if it was touched while she was in the batter's box, making it a foul ball. Yep. The pitch shows bunt, a little high and outside, ball one. Oh, pops it up. That hit the, the catcher before it went out of bounds. And I'm going to call that a base hit. I would say so. That's a tough play on the ball. So Lady Redbirds on first and second, nobody out. And Erica Phillips coming to the play. She can really help herself out here with a nice, clean base hit. Center fielder playing Erica to pull a little bit. On the last batter, she was on the other side of us. That's high inside near the head, and there's one nothing to Erica. <laughs> Oop, did they hit her? No, and that'll no. move both runners up. Pass pass ball. Wild pitch as it scored. So that's a big break for Matamora. Runners at second and third with Nobody out, and your best hitter up to bat. Maybe one of the best hitters in the area. She definitely has a lot of experience, and uh, you know her older sisters kind of paved the way for her. Gets in on one, fouls it out of play. Nice catch by Errol Samp. Looks like over there. <laughs> two and one, or yeah, two and one account. Lays the bunt down. Pitcher's going to bring it home. Safe. And it's one nothing men and more. Runners advance. Oh, and Erica's going to run in the second because no one's paying attention. Second and third. Still nobody out. one nothing Redbirds. Do you give her the fielder's choice or the hit? <sighs> That's fielder's choice there. So men more takes an early one to nothing lead. A suicide squeeze with your number three hitter up early in the game. <laughs> That's softball. <laughs> That's heads up base running too there by Phillips. Go. Yes, yes. It brings up Kyler Samp with nobody out, runner on second and third second again. Second and third. You got to wonder if Coach Tara Ballard over there noticed it sent Erica or if Erica went on her own. You Either know, way, not as you said, nice base running. You know, on a play like that, you almost have to just do that on your own because a coach doesn't have time to to tell the runner to go. I mean, she had to be running and be aware. That's almost an instinct play. Kyler leans in. Here's the first pitch. A little high and tight. One zero is the count. Potter's in a little bit of trouble here. Here in the first. Square to bunt. Foul ball out behind the catcher. One and one is the count now. Pitch. Ooh, close inside. Kind of leaned into it. Two and one.
Oh, there's a liner to right. Over That's the player's overhead. head. To the, up, to up the to fence. fence. Kyler's going to make it into second standing up. Both runs score. That's a double. Yes, a clean double. And I believe that's 3 nothing now, correct? And that brings up the shortstop, Megan Hargis. High pop. Clear out, of out of play. Out of play. 0-1. Foul two. Oh, and two. Football play. Swing and a miss. A little high strike there. Be the first out of the inning. First out of the inning, yes. So Brings one up. out. Catherine Curtis comes up now. Way low and outside there for ball one to Catherine. Got to get these two runs home. Two runs. Yeah, got to get them both home. Runners in second and third scoring position with nobody out. I want you to look. I mean... Maybe you need to upgrade your oh. glasses because I don't I don't see anybody on third. That's right, that's right. <laughs> but you still got a runner in second yeah, with, yeah. with one out in scoring position. And you know, Kyler's got some speed out there too, so a base hit, she's gonna score. We should we should have had somebody on third. <laughs> <laughs> she's already walked in. She scored. <laughs> I'll give you that one. <laughs> Nice pitch there, called strike. <clears throat> Swing and a miss for strike three. Two down now in the inning. Kyler Samp standing on second. And so that, go ahead. Delaney Jaden now up with two outs. Left-handed right fielder steps in, pitch on the way, high and outside, and Kyler Samp steals an unprotected third base. And that third baseman came in to protect against the bunt. That mm -hmm. left third base mm -hmm. unattended. Good eye by Coach Linder over there to send the signals to Kyler to come this way. Foul ball into the backstop, one and one. Out, out of play, one and two now. That ball's got to be knocked down by Jeff Herring. Is that who missed it? That's a terrible <laughs> effort. <laughs> Setting up outside, doesn't go for it. Nice eye, Delaney. Two and two now to count. Three Lady Redbirds in on the inning. Kyler Sample in third. Filed back. Low and outside. I believe that's full count now. Yes. A 
A little pop up back to the pitcher for the third out. Three runs on three hits, the end of one. Redbirds three, Fort and zero. Coming up four, Lady Potters, Casey Brunton, Jocelyn Nimmo, and Bridget Syrier. Syrier. Well, it's somewhat of a pattern. They said Metamore scored three runs the first time we played over there mm -hmm. in the first inning and held on to win three to one. And it looks like that's what they've done here in this. Yeah, that's what we were talking earlier, you know, in the pregame that we seem to get out to a good jump on these girls and then Morton seems to settle down. So it was very important for us to get those three runs in that first. Well, they, they settled down, their pitcher settled down real nice after Kyler Samp's double, two Ks and a pop out. Yeah, she started working that strike zone pretty good there. Uh, the, actually, the two strikeouts were on high fastballs, so the girls were you know, that riser was working for her, and the girl, either, either that or the girls were looking for something else, but either way, they went down swinging. Brunton, Nimmo, and Surrier do up for the Potters. A little easier to pitch to when you jump out to that three to nothing lead in the first inning. You relax a little bit, sure, but you don't want to relax too much. So want to bring the heat, throw in some change-ups, curves, Keep the girls off balance. Well, you can't be afraid now to, to let them hit the ball. I mean, if they're going to, that looked pretty, pretty solid there, didn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you got to trust your defense behind you, too, as that first pitch comes inside for ball one. Out of play. One and one again. She brought the pitch inside, and you can see. Uh, uh, Hartnett behind the plate. She's setting up inside. Low. Two and one. Ripped, foul out of bounds down the third base line. Two and two's the count. That was another inside pitch. She turned on it. I might want to think about something low and away here. They went low. She went down and got it. Fouled, fouled it off. Count still two and two. She's out in front of everything and throw that change up and let her swing over it. There it was, and she missed. Erica missed there, full count now. Boy, didn't miss by much. Mm -mm. Pounding that strike zone. Coming back inside again, fouls it off. Staying alive. Pretty good battle here. Full count. Erica sets on the mound. Here she comes with the pitch. Inside, finally gets her with a high strike. Swinging strike for out number one here in the second inning. Brings up Jocelyn Nimmo. First pitch. Ooh, good in. Good call. Up. Didn't think he was going to call it, but he was a little slow on the call, but he did. In there for a strike, 0 and 1. Fouled out of play out over of the play. Morton bench. 0 and 2. Not a lot of not a lot of room around the uh, foul territory here, is there? No, it's, it's not at all like the baseball diamond where there is a ton of room behind the, the catcher. Outside, 
fouled down the third, first baseline. 0-2 oh is the count two. still. Two. Erica steps back in the circle. This one's low. She comes down to heat. Down the middle for out number two in the inning. Back to back strikeouts for Erica Phillips. Nice looking pitch there. She's kind of gotten herself into a little bit of a groove here. Brings up the catcher, Bridget Surrier. Sur Surrier. Sets up inside. Good pitch. Yes. And got the Strike call. One. Must have caught that corner. A foul tip behind the plate. 0 and 2 is the count. Two outs here in the top of the second, and Lady Redbirds lead 3 0 over to Morton Potters. Lady Potters. Erica comes inside, not not biting on that one. One and two. That's a nice 0-2 pitch, though. Yeah, because you're not gonna if you hit that, you're not gonna hit it very far. No. Another good low pitch. This one across the plate, foul tip. Still one and two. There's nothing that'll drive a baseball coach crazier, faster than an 0-2 base hit. <laughs> Erica coming way inside, no call there. Two and two's the count. Erica working fast here in the second inning. The pitch and a base hit to center for Bridget Surrier. She's on first, two outs here in the top of the second. Brings up Jessica Seegers. The right fielder. Left-hander. Morton is loaded with, they had about four left-handed hitters in their baseball lineup. They've got about three here in their softball lineup so far. There you go, rims one in there. 0 and 1 in the count now. It's gonna be a low pitch. She went down, didn't chase, 1 and 1. Going down again, curveball. Oh, went high. Two and one's a count. Brings it inside, swinging strike two. Two and two. High pop up to the right side of the infield. Second baseman's camped under it. Nice catch for the third out. For the Redbirds, Abby Barrow, Kara Hartnett, and Mackenzie Marshall. Actually, it'll be Kara Hartnett, and then the top, Kenzie Marshall's the second baseman. Flex. Flex player. <clears throat> See if the Lady Birds can extend that 3 nothing lead they got in the first. It's always important to be able to come back and extend, add on, Especially when uh, their pitcher, as you said, you know, finished that inning with three straight outs uh, with the two Ks and then the put out. So she's starting to maybe find her groove. So uh, we need to, the bottom of the order needs to pick us up here and set us up for a good inning.
inside, way inside, oh, or one and oh. Well, she tries to come inside on just about every hitter, doesn't she? Popped up, catcher misses it behind the plate, one and one. Abby Barrow stands in, one and one to count. Here's the pitch. She gets around on it, but a foul ball down the third baseline. One and two now. Fouled off for count stays at one and two. Get started. Something started here, Abby. Find a hole somewhere. Needs to battle. Oh, low, two and two. Good eye there by the third baseman. The outfield is playing deep. Yes, they are. Coming inside. Full um, count. Give it to him. Full count. Nice and bad so far. Now you got to defend the plate here. She pops up into the dugout of the Lady Redbirds. Full count still. You know, when you say you got to defend the plate, it's full count. The pitcher is going to bring something close right. to the plate where, I mean, you got to be looking right around the heart of the plate. Be ready to drive this ball. Just, and if it's close, you got to follow it off. And that's what she did. Up over the home dugout. Don't expand the strike zone. You just got to make sure that you, uh, you know, you follow off anything that's close and drive anything that's over the heart of the plate. Mm, there's one hanging. She fouled that one off. She's doing exactly what you're saying. She's staying alive, looking for that one mistake that the pitcher makes. This is about a nine pitch at bat so far. Another foul. You know, the deeper you get into a pitcher here, the advantage goes to the batter because you've seen every pitch he has. Oh, yeah. You know, you've probably seen it two, three times each. So now it's just a matter of guessing correctly and sitting on that one pitch. Being, being, being disciplined, too, and, and not going for something that's off the, off the plate. Again, fouled off down the third baseline. Full count. Full count, full count, full count, full count. That's what we're, we got going on here. <clears throat> this will probably, I think this will be the 12th pitch of this at bat. It's probably close. There it is. Another one fouled off. The pitches are close, and she's battling. You know, you got to think, honestly, like I said, the advantage goes to the batter. You expect a pitcher, they're starting to get frustrated. They've thrown everything they can. And, uh, you know, a lot of times a pitcher leaves one over the plate. Or she throws it outside, and she finally earns that walk. She trots down the first. Earned that one. Yes. Great at bat. Brings up Kara Hartnett, the catcher, sophomore catcher. Sophomore catcher, left-handed batter with Abby Burrow on first. Good start to the inning for the Lady Redbirds. Gotta kind of get her Kara calls hair out of her eyes. You ever had that problem? <laughs> no, not for a really long time. About your sophomore year of high school? <laughs> That's about it. It was right after high school. Pops it up, play back to the first, under thrown. Right fielder picks it up. There is one out on the short pop up to the pitcher. Abby Barrow is able to get back safely on the errant throw. That brings up her sister, Kat Hartnett. Runner still on first. 
one down now in the inning. And again, this, the center fielder and the right fielder is about 15 feet from the fence. Popped up out of play over the tower back there. <laughs> 0 and 1. They charge. Nice bunt. That's a nice Plays point. it first. Advances Abby the second. Two down now. Here in the bottom of the second. The sacrifice. That was a real nice play by that third baseman. She was charging hard. Clean pickup. Real strong throw. Chandler Ryan, the freshman. We were talking earlier about her athleticism. Heather Morris now, the left fielder. Batting second is up, another left-hander with a runner in scoring position on second. And the first one she fouls back, 0-1. This one's a pass ball, and Abby's going to scoot in the set third very easily. I'm going to defend the catcher and say that was a wild pitch. You're right. I said fastball. You're right. That, that was up and over the head. One and one is the count with a runner on third. Catchers have to stick together a little bit here. <laughs> Hanging change up for a ball. Two one. She's got to uh, she's got to battle here and get on base. Give the pitcher Erica Phillips a chance to come to bat with a runner in scoring at least one runner in scoring position. Fouled back. Two and two. Lady Redbirds lead 3-0 here in the bottom of the second. The pitch lined up uh, nice in the job. center field, and Abby Burrow will score. We'll make the score Metamore 4, Morton 0. And Heather stands on first with the pitcher, Erica Phillips, coming to the plate. Nice at bat for Heather Morris, got the RBI. Erica reached on a fielder's choice the first time in the first inning and later scored. Heather Morris is two for two. That's a nice hit. Right back up the middle, you know, I mean, when they hit it up the middle, you know, they're right on that pitch. A little high and outside against Erica. We talked about adding on, and Metamore has done that here in the. Erica gets under one, pop up to the shortstop for the third out of the inning. That leaves Heather Morris left on base. Heading into the top of the third, and the Lady Redbirds lead now 4 0. Metamore scored one run on one hit. Leading off for Morton here in the top of the third. This is the top of the order. Nikki Eichstee, Nicole Cook, and Kelsey Dames. Nice inning for the Redbirds. Would have been nice to get one more run there. But you'll, you'll take the one. You'll take anything you can get this late in the season when you're yes. you know, working towards that postseason run. Right down the middle, fouled off. 0 and 1 is the count. Now 
to nice, nice running catch. play by Cat Hartnett here in center field. They'll get over and cut that one off. One out now here in the top of the third. Nice play by the center fielder, Cat Hartnett. Ranging far to her left. Brings up Nicole Cook, the pitcher. High fastball for ball one. She didn't bite, didn't chase. Another high fastball, 2-0. Oh. Coming inside this time, 3-0, oh. low and inside. Make her hit to get on. Erica in the circle with the pitch. Ball four, four straight pitches, and the uh, pitcher is on for the Morton Lady Potters. She singled her first time up. String, swinging strike one. Oh, and one to count now. Kelsey Dames, the shortstop, got on on a fielder's choice earlier. Second pitch by Erica, low and inside, one and one now. Low and out, two and one the count. Pop up behind second base. Great play by Megan Hargis. She throws the first. Safe as her throw pulls Kyler Samp off the bag, but great play. Showing again a nice range from the shortstop. And she was in the outfield grasp behind second base to haul that in. Brings up Taylor Namini. Coming up with two out in the inning and a runner on first. A nice pitch by Erica Phillips in there for a swinging strike. She also got on a fielder's choice. First inning. Coming inside. Ooh. Strike two. Wow. Oh, Blue gives it to her. Erica ahead 0-2 oh now. Looking Thank to finish you. off this inning. Throwing on the outside half. And go have a seat in the dugout. That's what she does. She doesn't chase though. One and two. They did go outside though. That was pretty close. There's the pitch. Low. Two and two. Over but low. Up and in, and she'll have her. Low and away, or low and in. She doesn't chase, and it's full count now. So we'll she, see how she defends the plate like Abby Barrow did last inning for Matamora. I say you get one up and in, and you have it's a strikeout. Up and in, and that's foul ball. Foul ball down the third baseline. Good rip at it, though. Full count now. Erica in the circle. And the pitch. Change up. Driven to left the field. Right in her track, right in the and left the, fielder's tracks. And the catch is made by Heather Morris for the third out. She didn't even have to move, did she? No, she did not. So good coaching there as they placed her just where she needed to be. And the Lady Redbirds keep the potters off the scoreboard and they head into the bottom of the third leading this one 4-0. No runs, no hits. One lady one left on the base pass to do up for Metamora. Kyler Samp 
Megan Hargis and Catherine Curtis. Great night for any kind of outdoor sport. Yes, it is. Oh, the wind has died down. It's very comfortable out here. No bugs. Just you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it is. It's, it's just a fantastic night, and uh, hopefully baseball team is getting ready. Hope they're already in. They started about 25 minutes ago, so hopefully we'll get some updates on how that one's going. Ball one is a call inside. Timeout. on top of that one, even to count at one and one. Trying to go back to right center field again. That right fielder has her playing deep this time. Yeah, she's she shaded be. over to where. There's a grounder to and the safe. shortstop who bobbles it and Kyler beats the throw to first. We're gonna give the shortstop the air? Yeah, that, that looked pretty routine. It should have been. Brings up Megan Hargis with nobody out. Runner on first. Coach Linder whispers in her ear and gives her a little instruction and he heads back down the line. Actually, it's Brooke Aarons now up to bat. Well, a little substitution. Yes, you are correct. It is Brooke Aarons. Stands in. Mm, now we're set to go. Pitch, she squares the bunt down the third baseline, foul. Everybody's got to go back. 0 and 1. High at the second pitch, even the count at one apiece. Squaring the bunt, pulls back. Ball two, two and one. Throw down the first, but Kyler, oh, was there a tip? No. No. Kyler steals second on the throw to first behind her. She advances now, runner in scoring position. Two strikes on the hitter, Aarons. And she strikes out swinging, nice pitch. High and tight for the first out of the inning. Brings up Catherine Curtis. Struck out her first time up. Foul down the left field side, and third baseman gets it in foul territory. For the second out of the inning, two outs now with Kyler Samp standing on second. Brings up Delaney Jaden. She's 0 for 1. Oh, that's just a good play by the shortstop. Ooh, it was a good play. Delaney had some speed there, batting off that left side. And shortstop went down to the ground, got to her knees, and threw out her first. Nice play for the third out. No runs, no hits. At the end of three, Metamore four. More than nothing.
do up for Morton. Lady Potters, Chandler Ryan, Casey Brunton, and Jocelyn Nimmo. Well, that ball looked like it was ticketed for center field, didn't it? Yeah, I really thought that was going to get through, but good play at short. They'll re-enter Hargis at shortstop. And freshman for Morton Chandler Ryan steps in. In the top of the fourth. Low for ball one from Erica Phillips. Another high fastball. Got a little work to do for Erica to come back and get Chandler now. And there's the first one, three and one now. Nice pitch. I'm assuming she was taking the whole way. I'm assuming she was, yes. This one she grounds to Hargis a short, long throw, and Got dropped it. by oh, Kyler man. Samp. I'm not so sure she'd have been safe. Or she'd have been out anyway. She got down that line pretty quickly, and Hargis had a long throw from short. Give her the hit. Yeah, that was. I mean, that was a deep. Hargis was almost on the on the outfield grass when she picked that up. First pitch strike. Runner on first, nobody out. Brings up Casey Brunton. Oh, there's a That's high a fly, ball. fly ball to left field. Morris is camped under it. The first out of the inning, and Chandler Ryan re reverses her way back to first. Brings up Jocelyn Nimmo. The left fielder. The two fly outs that Morris has caught. I don't think she's had to move more than two or three feet. I think she took two steps that time. Low and inside on the first pitch. Oh, one and oh. One out here in the inning. Top of four. Four nothing Lady Redbirds. Inside, two and oh. Popped up here to center. Caught by Kat Hartnett. Nice play. Two out and now in the inning. Bridget Surrier is one for one so far. Single first time up. Big cut on the first one. Fouled it back to the Backstop, 0-1. Little low, just missing low. 1-1 one one evens the count. If you're going to miss, I guess that's the place to miss because even if she does hit that ball, that's not going in. That's a foul ball. Mm-hmm. Change up that time for the second ball. Two and one now. Erica looking to get out of the inning. Big cut there. Fouled back. Two and two.
Ooh, Erica that's a nice comes pitch. inside with a nice pitch, as you just said, and struck out looking for the third out. Redbirds nope. lead 4-0, heading into the bottom of the fourth. No runs on one hit. It's only the fourth hit she's given up. How many strikeouts does Erica have so far? Uh, three. Three strikeouts on the night. First one looking for Metamora, Abby Barrow. Kara Hartnett and Cat Hartnett. So it's 8 9 1 coming up for the Redbirds. Again, just like the second inning, we need them uh, girls at the bottom of the lineup to get something started. And Abby did the last time she was up with that seemed like a 20 pitch battle that she finally won with the, earning the, the walk. And she later came around and scored. 14 pitch at bat. Hello, beautiful. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hi, Anthony. How much does my discount double check save me? About 150. Done. I don't have State Farm, but insurance, find me money. I got you a dollar. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. Having insurance isn't the same as having State Farm. There to help you with unexpected savings. That's getting to a better state. Greg Harmon in Germantown Hills is there to help you with unexpected savings. Now's the time here, you know, middle inning. Let's add a couple more runs here and stretch this. Just got to keep pounding away and extending that lead. Another quality at bat. First pitch inside, almost clips her knee, but no, one and zero. Oh. Barrel seeing the ball really well because she stayed in there. I mean, a lot of a lot of hitters might have been bailing out on that one. I know I would have. <laughs> I just prayed for somebody to hit me. <laughs> Rip down the third base line foul. One and one to count now. Pitch. Abby rips it down the third base line out of bounds. One and two. Now it's time to protect the plate. Work the count. Sets up outside. Two and two. Good eye. That catcher set up way outside, hoping that Abby would chase it, and she didn't. This one, she drives down out of bounds, out of play. Two That's and two. Way foul. <laughs> She's a little early on that one. It appears that some mom just out chased the kid over there for the ball. That's a player. Is that a, oh, it is a player. Okay, I, I was going to give props to some mom who just outran a 10 year old. But <laughs> 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 and Abby watches that one go outside to even a count, or to gain a full count here. Again, she's battled back now, just as we spoke last time when she was up. She's got to make the pitcher earn it. This one fouled out of play. Six pitches. Here we go again. Full <laughs> count to Abby Barrow. Bottom of the fourth. Abby calls time as the pitcher is taking a little long. Make a reset. Abby drives this one to center, is dropping, 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 and the second baseman comes way out, and makes a nice catch to retire Abby. One out here in the top of the fourth, or bottom of the fourth. Brings up Cat Harton at the catcher. She's 0 for 1. High and 1 and up.
coming way inside, 2-0 oh now. I think that pitch got away from her a little bit. There's a liner in the right, left center. Base in hit. there for a hit. Runner aboard. So the baseball team takes a four to nothing lead in the second inning. In the second. Over at Limestone tonight. Nice. Runner on first with one out. First pitch on the way, called strike. 0 and 1. Second pitch on its way. Up, back up the pitcher. Try to turn two. No. Cat races down the first baseline, beats the throw. Two out now. Runner still on first. Heather Morris coming to the plate. Outside, uh, one and oh. Oh, that's a ball. That's a, it's actually a pitch. It's a pitch, but it hit her leg on the on the throw. It, and I thought she just dropped it at first, right in the in the circle, but it did roll oh. to the plate. So mm -hmm. that's a pitch. Makes it two and zero. Oh. And cat advances to second. Runner in scoring position now for the Lady Redbirds. Call strike inside. Two and one. You don't see that too often, do you? No. You would if I threw it underhanded. <laughs> First people, that's why they have fences up in front of the dugout. <laughs> High change up, three and one now. Inside, take your base. Base on ball for Heather Morris. Runners now first and second with two down, and Erica Phillips coming to the plate. She can help herself out immensely here as she hold, has a 4 nothing lead here in the bottom of the fourth. She's 0 for 2 with a fielder's choice and a pop out. Outside, 1 and 0. And their pitcher, Cook's, having a little trouble finding the strike zone also. Erica drives one to deep, deep, caught at the fence by the left fielder. Nice play a fly out. for the third out of the inning. So we head to the top of the fifth, and Lady Redbirds lead 4 nothing as they leave two runners on base. No runs, one hit at the bottom. Of, uh, coming into the top of the fifth, Metamore leads 4-0. to zip. It's a nice play by their left fielder. Well, you know, I mean, they're set up pretty deep on a lot of the, the Matamore hitters, so she didn't really have to run that far either, but it, it was a good catch knowing that you're coming up on that fence quickly. Right. Due up for Morton, Jessica Seegers, and then the top, Nikki Eichste and Nicole Cook. So here in the fifth inning, Phillips will face nine, one, and two in the Lady Potter batting order. Seegers is 0 for 1. She's uh, she's kind of handled the Morton lineup, hasn't she? Uh, she's gotten off to a nice start. And like we said, though, when you get when your offense gives you three runs in the first inning, you can relax a little bit, and that's what she's just done. Throw, and just throw strikes. Mm -hmm. As she did right there for strike one, 0 and 1 on the count. Take a pitch a little low. Skips in there for ball one.
outside low. Two and oh the count. I'm sorry, two and one the count. Pop fly into right field. Diving catch. Diving attempt. A heck Ball gets by. Going to throw in. She's going to slide in the third with a triple. You can do that when you're up four to nothing, though. Yes. Brings up the top of the order, Nikki Eichsty. First pitch along the way, driven down the left field line, foul. Out of bounds, actually, as it hits the dead. All in one account. Really got to buckle down now. Don't let them have a big inning. There's a pitch. Popped up. Can't harden it. It comes all the way in. Basically, her and... And Hargis exchanged positions on that play. Yeah. <laughs> and she comes in, reels it in for the first out of the inning and holds the runner at third base at the same time. Usually on a pop fly to the center field, that runner's going to score, but she ended up almost on the infield when she caught it. First pitch in there for a called strike, 0-1. Nicole Cook, the batter, she's one for one, base hitting a base on balls. Erica winds up, throws it in there, one and one. She's got Morton's only base on ball. Only, only girl from Morton to walk tonight. Anxious hitters. Two and one now. She's seeing the ball well like Abby Barrow is. Inside, she rips it. Nice oh, catch. Oh, nice catch by Abby Barrow. If she hadn't been holding the runner on, she may not have gotten that one, but she was standing on third base, took one step to her right, jumped up, caught it for the second out. Brings up Kelsey Dames with two outs. Well, this would be a, a big boost for Metamora to, you know, lead off triple and, and hold the runner at third base. And at the same time, it's a heartbreaker for the Potters. Pitch is inside, call it strike. 0 and 1. Second pitch, high change up. 1 and 1 now. Coming inside, a little low, two and one. Doesn't chase, three and one. That one looked good from here, Scott. It sure did. But we're not calling a game. No. Not from behind the plate anyway. So Erica in a little trouble here, three and one. Just got to finish this inning out here. Here's the pitch. Back up hits Erica at the pitcher's mound. Rolls to second and runners safe at first and a runner scores. Which brings the game now to Metamore four, Morton one. Just gotta come back and get this batter here and really nothing hurt. No, not really, you know. I'd rather see them have that. Then, then to walk a bunch of hitters, get a couple mm -hmm. errors, and score a cheap one. That was not cheap because that no. that that ball was hit hard. It was a nice hit. We're attempted to catch on, you know, nice attempt at the catch over here, and just didn't bring it up. And she was on the base path. She was flying around the base path. Pitch now, low and inside, one and one.
Foul back over the backstop. One and two. America's in the circle. Wines, delivers. Foul. Foul, Foul ball. ball. Right. Just outside of the third base bag. One and two remains the count. Driven to left field. Well, our, uh, Morris comes in about another three steps. And up to <laughs> four steps and gathers in for the third out of the inning as Morton puts one on the board here. So Lady Redbirds lead 4 1 now. One run on two hits. The end of five, through five and, or uh, four and a half. It's at a more four. The Lady Potter's one. Do it for Metamora uh, Samp. Hargis and Curtis. The four, five, and six hitter. Get a little something started here. Got some power hitters coming out. Samps one for two, the big two run double mm -hmm. in that first inning. Two RBIs got on on an air in the third inning. Kyler steps in and we're ready to go here in the top of the fifth, or bottom of the fifth. First pitch, Kyler sends it deep. Caught by the center fielder, about 12 feet in front of the fence for the first out of the inning. One pitch, one out. If you're Morton, you like it. Hit that one pretty deep. Megan Hargis comes up to bat. Megan lays off a riser. One and over the count. Drives this one foul down the third base line. One and one. Change up. Two and one now. Need base runners. Inside three and one. Yeah, we need to get that one run back. Yeah. You know, if the other team scores and you come back and you score another run on top of that, or to get that run back, or maybe score one more, that just deflates a team, any kind of momentum. Picked up by the third baseman, over to first, for the out, to retire Megan Hargis. Two outs now, and what is going to be, what is so far a quick bottom of the fifth. Steve Guzman comes in to hit. Sees her first pitch, swinging, missing, strike one, 0 and 1. She came in to play shortstop. Second. Oh, second baseman, that's right. We're backwards. Came, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know it's, it's hard sometimes yeah. out here. Good eye on that one, 1 and 1 evens the count. Now she's getting to hit. 
here in the fifth. Swinging strike for the third out of the inning. No runs, no hits at the end of five. Metamore four, Morton one. First pitch in there by Erica is a strike. Way to get ahead of the batter. Chandler Ryan's one for two tonight. Base hit in the fourth. Fly it out to right in the first. They had an awfully good chance to score in that first inning. Their first two hitters got base hits. And then Erica Phillips really settled down. Got some nice defensive plays from her, from her infield. And kind of set the tone. Foul off to the right side, second strike. Yeah, I mean, we talked about a couple times already, you know, the girls need to get off to a good start against Morton because they seem to settle in, and they've done that again today. They fell behind 3 nothing in the first, and since then it's 1-1. Fouled out of play. Tomorrow night, more, or Metamore will go over to Limestone and play conference game. Meanwhile, Morton travels to East Peoria. That's a tough place to play. Yeah. I imagine Sarah Fink would be on the mound for East Peoria. She is a ton. Popped up. Foul territory caught by Abby Barrow for the first out of the inning. Five more outs to get. Brings up Casey Brunton. Erica ready to throw. Inside, ball one. Brunton is 0 for 2 with a K and a fly out to left. High. Hold on to that one just a little too long. <laughs> <laughs> 2 and 0. Carrot Hart and I had to really go up and get that one. It was a nice job of keeping it from going to the backstop. High three and zero. Just throw strikes. Ooh, that was close, but didn't catch it. Four and zero, and she walks to first base for the. Is that maybe outside? It may have been a little high and outside, but it was close. If that's a 3-1 pitch, he might give that to us. That one he gives us, gives us uh, it's 0 and 1. To Jocelyn Nemo here. Runner on first, one out here in the top of the six. Low and inside, evens the count at one apiece. Outside, two and one. Takes a cut. Two and a, two and two now. To the left fielder from Morton. Make her hit to get on. Steps in, the count at two apiece. Erica in the circle. The pitch, struck out oh, swinging. Nice pitch. Two outs now here in the top of the six. Lady Redbirds lead 4-1, runner on first base for the Lady Potters. Brings up Bridget Surrier, the catcher. Erica goes low and inside, no chase. One and oh to count. Oh, 
Nice, nice pitch. pitch. Even the count at one apiece. And they're grounded to Hargis is short. Over to second. Missing. Low throw, not gathered in by Guzman. And the runner advances to second and safe at first. <laughs> I don't know how you would rate that one. <laughs> I mean, that's a throwing error. The fielder's choice with an error. <laughs> E6. Ball one. Brings up Jessica Seegers, who is one for two with a triple. She's got Morton's only run. We don't need her to get into one here now. Erica delivers. Strike one, even the count at one apiece. What they've done, though, is they've turned their lineup over. And if this girl, if Seegers does make the final out, they'll have the top of the order coming up in the top of the seventh. Two and one. Swing and strike. Even two and count two. two and two. A little tip action on that one. Erica with a chance to finish out the Lady Potters here in the top of the six. And let's have the top of the order come up with nobody on. The pitch, deep drive down the. That's going to be way foul. First base line out of bounds. Still two and two. Out of play? A little bit. <laughs> Struck and her out struck with a change up. Nice pitch. <laughs> that the out of play there, you just said it kind of. I laugh because when we talked about the girls when we played played at the grade school way back then, there wasn't a fence. If a girl could get to that, they could have gotten yeah. to it. Yeah. <laughs> no runs and no hits. At the end of five and a half. Metamora four. Morton one. Do up for Metamora. Jaden. Barrow and Hartnett. So it's seven, eight, nine. Let's get some insurance runs. Absolutely. Jaden's 0 for 2. Barrow is 0 for 1. Hartnett is 1 for 2. Filed back, Delaney Jaden in, 0-1 now. Second pitch, a little high, ball one. to the second baseman for the first out of the inning. And Abby Barrow coming to the plate now who's seen about 20, 21 pitches tonight. So <laughs> she she should know what she's looking for. In two at bats, yeah, she's, she's close to 20 pitches. The first one she tips, foul, 0-1. Second one is fouled over to the fence down the third base side. 0 oh and 2 now. We didn't we need to have her straighten that out and that'll drop in somewhere. The 
Pitch is low and outside for ball one. Good eye. Holds off, two and two. Drives that one down the third base line, out of play. She's just beating up those. <laughs> this pitcher's gonna be glad when she doesn't have to face her anymore tonight. <laughs> She's wearing her arm out. Two and two, trying to work it full here. Good eye. Oh, I'm sorry. She walked. Her second walk of the night. I missed a pitch. Another seven pitch at bat. <laughs> I'd say that's 28 pitches on the evening. Pretty close. Up now is Kara Hartnett. She squares the bunt. Nothing doing. One and know the count. Swinging strike on the second one, misses, one and one. Hartnett steps in, the pitch, squares the bunt, down the third baseline, good bunt. Nice pickup by the third baseman, throws it over for the out at first, but the runner advances to second, and Abby Barrow again is in scoring position for the Lady Redbirds. Two away here in the bottom of the six. I'm impressed with uh, their third baseman, Chandler Ryan, though, for a freshman. She fields that position awfully well, doesn't she? She's going to be scary good for the next three years in more than just one sport. First pitch now is in there for a ball, 1 0. To Cat Hartnett, the leadoff hitter. For the Redbirds. Second pitch, a curve, and he looked a little low from here, but got the call on it, one and one. The pitch, two and one now. Third baseline picked up by Chandler Ryan. Long throw over to first for the third out of the inning. Once again, no runs, no hits. At the end of six, Metamore four. Lady Potters one. And the Potters will have the top of the order coming up. Ike D, Cook, and Dames. It always seems to be that way, doesn't it? I mean, it, when you're watching a major league game, yeah, and, they and, go your, nine. And, and your favorite team is up, you know, well, your, your favorite team's playing, the other team always has their three, four, five guys up, it seems. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Cub fan, so they're just, when they're up to bat. <laughs> I was asked a few weeks ago if I knew what the shortest sports season was. The shortest sports season? Yep. Cub season. <laughs> <laughs> you know, usually over in June, you know how that is. Actually, in, in reality, the shortest sports season would be, what would it be, <laughs> football? Uh, are we talking pro? Uh, no, I mean like in high school. Oh, high wow. school definitely is, is football, yes. <laughs> Erica looking to finish off the game here. Not by much, though. A little outside. If you just go by games, 
Well, if you go you by know, weeks, though, that you play. It's nine weeks. And, and softball and baseball is not much more than nine weeks. I know, but they, they play a lot of games in those nine weeks. Strike one. One and one now. A little low, skips away. Two and one now on the count. Getting a little sloppy here in the top of the seventh. Girls need to get together and finish this one off and head to Limestone tomorrow night. With sole possession of second place in the middle line. And, and, their, tw and their 20th, 20th win 20th, on the yes, yes. Tenth win in the middle line. Nice pitch oh, caught by caught. Erica. Right back at her. Nice reaction by the pitcher for the first out of the inning. If that gets by her, though, Megan Hargis was set up pretty well. Yeah. And she's got a gun over there at short, so you got to have wheels to get down to first base and beat that throw. Here's the pitch. Too a little high. Nicole Cook, one down here in the top of the seventh. A little inside, 2-0. Good pitch nice. for a called strike. Nice pitch. Two and one now. Doesn't chase. Three and one. Come back and get her. Make her hit it. Got a nice defense behind you. Let Three one play. lead. Pop up. Guzman doesn't get to it. Falls in for a base hit. Runner aboard for Lady Potter with one away here in the top of the seventh. Once again, I'd rather see that than a base on balls. She earned it. She found a spot for it. Kelsey Dames comes to bat for the Potters. Runner on first here in the seventh. Coming inside, called strike, 0 and 1. Second pitch here over to Hargis who dives to stop it. Good job just to eat the ball there. Keeps that runner from advancing the third at all, or even having a notion of doing it. First and second now with one out here in the top of the seventh, and the Potters are trying to make it interesting. Tyler Namini comes to the plate for the Potters. Hits the ball in the same place, now she'll have a force at third. A little inside for ball one. Pitch, good pitch, call strike, one and one. In the dirt, ball two. Two and one now. Don't worry about the runners, Erica, just Fired in there. Three and one goes to count. And the Potters are looking to load these bases. I would assume she's going to be taken on this pitch. Yeah, I would be too. All right, pretty safe bet. Make them throw strikes this late in the inning, or late in the game. And ball four loads the bases for the Lady Potters. And Scott with one swing of the bat, they could have a one-run lead. 
Is that Chelsea Ryan coming up? Chandler Ryan. Chandler Ryan, I'm sorry. Is that who's up? Time out here on the field. So the Redbirds look to regroup to finish good. this out with one out here in the top of seven. Good Bases time out. Yes. That's a good time out by Derek Linder to come out, settle her down a little bit. And she hasn't been in this kind of a jam all game except for the first inning. But mm -hmm. The game's on the line now. Chandler's coming to bat with a single here in the fourth. I believe she's one for three on the day. Yeah, flight out to right. Popped out to short and had a base hit in the fourth. And some stellar plays at third base. The freshman stands in against the senior. Pitch. Right back to her. Comes home. Force out at home for the second out. That's a big play there. A huge play. Bases are still loaded, but now there's two outs here in the top of the seven. And let Redbirds still lead four to one. Brings up Casey Brunton with two outs. Bases still loaded. pitch. Low one inside for ball one. <laughs> Swing on the second pitch to even the count at one apiece. It's a nice pitch. You a little surprised they're swinging though? You know, I, I I am a little bit because she's been a little, I won't say wild, but, you know, she's been missing a little bit here in this inning. And here, here's my point is you're down three, you got the bases loaded. She's had a little bit of trouble finding the play. Don't right. you want to take a strike? I mean, this late in the game, seven innings, you know, yeah. I mean, you've you got to think the arm's tiring a little bit. One and two now the count. And the pitch on the way, low and outside, skips in there. Two and two. Phillips in the circle. Gets the sign, here's the pitch. And a pop-up out of play. Oh, gets the backstop. Two and two. We'll do it again. Final out here. Nice pitch by Erica. Fouled out of play over the Redbird dugout. Staying alive. Making Erica work. Making her think about every pitch. Ooh, wee! I don't know where that pitch was at, Scott. Wow, that changeup was right there. We run the count full. Fooled the hitter and the umpire, I think. I don't know what he was looking for, but here's the payoff pitch and foul ball again off the batter's leg. She's gonna get a second to walk that off, then we'll reset. She doesn't chase, and that walks the second run of the game in. 4-2 now, Redbirds lead. Base is still loaded for the Potters with two out here in the top of the seven. Tying run out at second base. And 
that brings up Jocelyn Nimmo, 0 for 3 with two Ks. Uh, I'm not sure what he's looking at, but... They, they must be a little high. <laughs> I mean, come on. Come on, Blue. 1 and 0 the count now. Second pitch here. Get a call on that one. One and one to even account. Yeah. Pop up out of play. One and two down to the final strike, hopefully. Bases loaded for the Potters, trailing 4-2 in the top of the seven. Got to keep the ball in the infield. I'm thinking pop out here, Scott. Yeah, I'm thinking a strikeout. Pressure's all on the hitter now. One and two. Ball two. Two and two now. I'm still sticking with my pop out here. I think she's going to get her because right now the pressure's on the hitter. Timeout called. There's a ball thrown back in. Two down here in the top of the seventh. Batter steps in. Phillips in the circle. The throw. Struck her out. Yeah, yeah, I know what the nudge was for. I hear you. I missed the call, but... Hey, anyway, it's a Lady Redbird win, and they gain sole possession of second place in the Middle Line Conference. So they go to 20 and 10 on the season, 9 and 3, in the, or 10 and 3 in the Middle Line. Uh, you know, we didn't get a chance to see the first game between these two, but if, I think if we did, we'd probably realize it, it was really a carbon copy, would be my guess. Yeah. We were told before the game that. The birds jumped out to a three nothing lead in the first, and it finished three one. Well, here we jumped out to a three nothing lead in the first, and Morton settled in and and made a go, made a run at it late, and we we're lucky enough to get out of here with the four two win. And now, winners get to run sprints. <laughs> it's you gotta go down and run with them. <laughs> no. I don't want to embarrass them, you know. <laughs> them or me. Someone's getting embarrassed. I don't know who, but someone's getting embarrassed. Maybe we'll have a chance to have a chat with uh, Victoria's head coach, Derek Linder, in just a few minutes. We're here with uh, Victoria's head coach, Derek Linder. Coach, uh, uh, nice game. You got on them early in the first inning with three runs, and I think that kind of set the tone. Yeah, you know, we've done that the last three senior nights with uh, East Peoria, or I'm sorry, with Morton and Limestone, got out early and, and done a good job. And, you know, we did that last night too. So, you know, that's two good wins. And, uh, you know, the nice thing was doing it through ex execution and getting our bunts down and stuff. Yeah, you did, uh, fundamentally, you did, you know, that kind of set the tone for, for you guys the, this whole game. Uh, the other thing I thought too, I thought Erica Phillips was awfully tough in the circle tonight. Yeah, she was. She. You know, they're about the second, third inning. You knew she had her good stuff, and uh, that ball was really popping. Uh, I don't know if you could see it back here, but, you know, from the side you can really see it. And, you know, that was nice to see her be a good bulldog and just go after people. And, you know, even when she ran into a little trouble there at the end, she still went after people. Yeah, she only had three walks for the night. And two of those came in the seven things. Started to tire a little bit, but still um, played, you know, pitched awfully tough. Yeah, and I don't know if it's that she tires or that she uh, she starts to think a little too much and starts to try and be too fine. And, you know, she's just got to understand that she's got very, very good stuff and, and she's got to trust in that stuff. Uh, get, moves your record to 20 and 10 and, and uh, 10 and 3 in the conference. I believe you've clinched second place in the middle line. Yeah, and I think that uh, what that does is it gives us the all sports trophy through yeah. that. So that's, you know, hey, it was a good night. You get 20 wins. Anytime you can say you got 20 wins in a season, anytime you can say you got. Uh, the all sports trophy and any times you can say you can win on senior night it's a good night yeah it is it's a really good night uh, tomorrow night you go over to limestone and uh, I don't want to say it's a meaningless game but it's a game you can uh, kind of relax a little bit yeah we can relax but then you know we can also get some things worked on and you know work on especially our hitting and, and doing the little things right with our hands and and uh, keep going you know to where we go into Saturday playing a very very good sterling team and 
you know, see really where we are at right now going into regionals. Uh, and, and I guess, you know, tomorrow night's game, you, you do want to get some, you know, get a win, get a win this weekend because you want to go into the regionals on a high note. Yeah, we do. And, you know, if we play well in those those two games, you know, win or lose, that's that's really what we're looking for. And I think that's what those kids are starting to understand. It's you know, it's not necessarily a win or loss, but it's it's how we played and how we executed things. And you know, I just think that we made a lot of a good plays. I think Megan Hargis, you know, there's a couple plays that she made in that field that were tough plays that you know, I think a lot of people would want to try and make too big of a throw or throw it over. You know, she ate the one when she needed to. She tried to go to yeah. second base knowing that that's the shorter throw, a little bit of safer throw there. You know, it didn't work out for us, but you know, still it kept somebody you know out of out of further scoring position, and uh, you know, just those little things coming around about these kids, I'm I'm just really happy about. Yeah, I thought too. I think we made mention of it when it happened. Uh, she kept the ball in the infield, um, kept the runner from going to third base. Uh, you're right, the little things are what are winning ball games for us. Yeah, and that's what we preach all the time. That's what we weren't doing here a couple of weeks ago when we were getting ourselves in trouble. It was, you know, it was keeping people off base, working ahead in counts. And, and uh, you know, Abby Barrow, too, there's another one that had three very, very good at bats. I think she was 0 for 1 in the night, you know, but that's not uh, not indicative of, of the night that she had. She had three very, very, very good at bats. I think she saw 27 pitches. The first, <laughs> the first at bat, I think it was a 14 pitch at bat and coaxed a walk out of it. Yeah. Yeah, she came over third base. She smiled and said, "That's the most pitches I've ever seen in one at bat." So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that that was a that was an outstanding at bat there in the uh, second inning, leading off and got on base and then scored. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, all in all, just a, a great night. Uh, like you said, he did. He had a lot of things accomplished tonight. Yeah. Um, Got second place in the conference, got the all sports trophy back in Metamora, and uh, you won on senior night. Yep, you can't beat that. Good right. night. Congratulations. Thank you. And good luck uh, the rest of the way. Okay, thanks. Thanks. No problem. That'll do it from Metamora. Metamora wins 4-2. to two.